Hello and welcome back to another UE4 tutorial and in this episode I'm going to show you a, a quick little cool feature uh, that you can do in Unreal and that's vertex painting so vertex painting uh, is easier, easier to show you what it does before I explain it so here I have a rock from the starter content that you have with the engine and you can see here I can paint a texture on to my object so I'm going to show you how to set this up and how it works and explain how it works okay so to create the tech material to put onto our rock uh, we have to create one from scratch uh, to allow us to do that two-tone effect so I'm going to make a new material Click on add new and we'll name it two tone. Now that'll do. And open it up. So this is probably the first video I've done with the material editor, or at least showing off some of the peak features of it. So I'll give you the basic rundown. So this is the material node, and it's here that you control what kind of material it is and its uh, various uh, attributes. So you've got base colour, metallic, specular, roughness, emissive colour, and opacity, opacity mask, normal, so on and so forth. Loads of things you can do. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them um, in this video, but I'll go through the ones as I come to them uh, in this tutorial. Uh, on the left, we've got a preview window, so you can see what the material looks like. This is default, it's black, so nothing like that at all. And down here at the details panel, so this is where you access the details for all the nodes that you drop in. On the right hand side you've got your palette and these are all the different nodes that are available to you in the material editor. Plenty of them. So uh, this is actually quite a simple trick to pull off. So we're going to need some textures to first of all work with. So to add a texture to material we right click and type in texture sample and it's this one here texture sample. And we need four of these, so copy with control C and paste one, two, three, more. So I'm going to drag these two of these down here and one up here, a bit more space apart. Um, so these two are going to be our diffuse maps, and these are going to be our normal maps. A diffuse map is the colour of what it looks like, okay, it's just a basic what it looks like in colour terms. The bottom two are going to be normal maps, and normal maps is how it is lit, and that's what gives the illusion of higher detail uh, meshes, because you trick the lighting to light it as if it's more higher detail. So it's a very powerful tool, you see it in most modern games nowadays. So we need to assign some textures to these things, so click on the top one. And in the details panel, you'll see there's an option here saying texture, where we can choose a texture from a list. So I've just got the starter content. So in here, I'm just going to type in uh, rock. And I'm going to choose the uh, rock basalt underscore D. D stands for diffuse. So I'm going to choose a diffuse map. And next one, I'm going to type in grass. And again, grass underscore D, D for diffuse. Uh, this one, I'm going to do rock again, but this time I want basalt N, N for normal. And this one again, grass, N. And you see how normal maps look different from their diffuse uh, counterparts. Okay, So it's a special type of um, way of lighting an object. So the way this works is through called vertex colouring. So if we right click in here and type in vertex color you get input data so the red nodes are input data so the input data is broken down into these various nodes these pins so you have the top one is rgb this was red this was green blue and alpha and you'll notice the textures have the same outputs too okay so if you just want to get the red channel of this picture you can just come out here and get the red channel or the alpha just out of here and get the alpha but if you want all the color you just drag off the top one so the vertex color is what ha is what controls uh, these uh, the the mixture of these two uh, textures. So 
the way it works is through a linear interpolation or a lerp so if you type in lerp l-e-r-p and you'll see here linear interpolate big fancy word i know but it's actually quite simple and very very powerful we use them a lot with creating materials so i need two of these one for diffuse one for normal and lerp has an a b and alpha input so a and b are two values so this would be value one or value a rather and this is going to be value b and likewise at the bottom here value a value b so a linear interpolate is basically uh, you have two values and the alpha input controls the mixture of those two values so if your example had a value of say uh, 1 and 2 and the alpha was 0 0.5 the output would be 1.5 okay so imagine a line connecting these two on a graph okay imagine a graph a line connecting these two this will simply output whatever uh, position on that graph and that value that comes out of it so that's what controls the mixture of these two um, values so the alpha is controlled by the vertex color so I'm going to drag that into there and drag that into there and now we can hook this up to our base color and this one to our normal so you can see how the normal works so if I disconnect normal and disconnect base color so here's just a normal black square, a uh, black sphere, and hit up the normal. You can see the lighting effect. It's still round. It ain't changed nothing about the actual shape of it. It's still a round object. It's just the way it's lit is very different. And if we hook up the base color, the combination of the two gives the illusion that this is a more detailed um, material. So a couple more things just to tidy up our material. We're going to change the metallic spe and specular and the roughness of our material so we're just going to set these constant values so constant is just a number so drag off a metallic and type in constant and they just want the basic constant just one value one number and you want this one to be zero so metallic goes to zero and so the specular so metallic does what it says on the tin really it is basically Pardon me, how metallic it looks. So if you have zero, it's not metallic at all, so it looks more like plastic, more like yeah, like yeah, like a plastic. And one makes it look like metal. The specular is how shiny it is. So how much does light affect it? So we don't want light to be bouncing off of our grass because that looks weird. We just want it to be a simple non-reflective surface. Um and roughness though. We want to lock up to one. So change type in constant and this value won't be zero, it'll be one. And it makes sense because our grass is rough and our rock is rough. And this basically roughs up the, the texture, um, gives a bit of noise to it, roughs up the uh, the overall look of how the light is bounced off of it. So it's not just so smooth all the time, it'll look a bit uh, the light will get sucked into it. Uh, when it gets hit by a light in the scene and there's our material done so I can click on apply up the top here and click close and now if I drag this two-tone onto our rock you can see our rock from earlier appears so how do we paint this well on the left hand side one of your modes has paint with this little paintbrush click on that and this is vertex coloring and here you've got colours, weights and textures, various options, various uh, options for the brush, uh, the view and vertex colours that you are painting with. So we just want to paint with uh, the white and the black. And the way you paint is you left click to apply the paint colour. So you see here it shows up as, as grass. And you hold down shift and click two rays and you can change the size of your brush as you see fit and it's fall off and uh, yeah and it's strength and that's all there is to it so this is a really cool way of doing 
textures. Um, so, so common uses I've seen of this is if you've got texture for a wall that is clean and another one of a wall that is dirty or cracked, you can really customize the objects in your scene of the wall panels uh, and give a crack here and there or make it look a bit more dirty. It's an easy way of applying dirt or cracks to uh, an object without having to make multiple objects or multiple textures. Uh, it makes it really easy uh, to really add some dynamic looking uh, meshes to your world. So it's a really cool feature and I strongly recommend using it for your game worlds. Um, point of note, this will only work on static meshes. Uh, won't work on, say, BSP, so it won't work on these things here. It only works on static meshes. Okay. Uh, that's it all um, for this one. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. Uh, also, if you have any suggestions, you want to see how certain things are done, please, again, leave them in the comments, and I'll get back to you uh, with a response or a video. Please like and share this, and uh, please subscribe for a future Unreal Engine 4 tutorials. I've been Ryan, and thank you for watching. See you next time.